Hello everybody, we are live and I apologize if you were uh, here sooner, but yes, we're finally live. Can you see me? Am I looking in the right place? I don't know. So today I thought I would bring you a video about uh, why I started a YouTube video, or why I started a YouTube channel, sorry, why I started a YouTube channel and tips for becoming successful on YouTube. I'm not a large YouTuber by any means, but I certainly consider myself as someone who has done fairly well considering I did not get into this game too long, you know? Um, so anyway, we are outside. I am using this new tripod that my husband has got me. And so you might need to bear with me. Amika B says, hello. Hello, Amika B. Yes, I see your response or comment. So anyway, make sure you have something to drink. You have a little snack because I think this is going to be a fairly longish video because there, uh, there's too much to cover. But I'm going to try, Denise Mills says, hey, y'all. But I'm going to try my best to focus in first again on why I started a YouTube video and how to become successful okay or how what basic tips you need if you are a new youtuber or if you're an aspiring content creator or aspiring new entrepreneur um, business owner or even doctor i often get people direct messaging me trying to find out doctors uh, how to start a YouTube channel or what editing software they need um, what tools they need so let's sit down here for a minute I'm gonna put you down for a minute hopefully you can see me properly all right if you don't you'll say something uh, let's see if I sit here I have notes with me okay I have notes with me y'all because I wanted to take this seriously can you see me is that good it's a little dark because we're under an umbrella is this okay uh, hey Habiba from Reina and Norena in Carson California hey drama queen <laughs> okay so I think this is good yeah don't worry it's a little it looks like it's a little dark but it's not dark you know what let's do this how about that that's good uh, Denise Mills says okay all right, so why did we, or why did I start a YouTube channel? And I hope you can hear me properly. Well, for those of you who are new to the channel, hello from New Zealand. All these comments are a little bit distracting, but that's okay, let me focus. Focus on you and the content. Um, okay, a couple of years ago, uh, while working as a private physician uh, in private practice in medicine, uh, in a small town, I wanted a creative outlet. I've always considered myself an artistic person. Um, besides medicine, I was always drawn to the arts. And in fact, in college, I was a theater major. So believe it or not, I was a theater major going to medical school, which did not make any sense to anybody except to me. But this is what I wanted to do. I've always enjoyed anything creative, painting, drawing, drama. Um, those are the things that just felt very natural to me. Now, when you're working in private practice or when you're working in medicine, which is a very conservative area, um, and legitimately so, uh, you tend to lose those parts of you. Uh, you tend to feel like you really should not uh, show those parts of you uh, because, you know, people are looking for someone that they want to respect. They're looking for someone that they want to look up to. And they're looking for someone that seems uh, an authority who has some good sense, right? So usually when you think of those type of people or when you think of your doctor, you don't necessarily think of someone who is on YouTube, right? Uh, so anyway, I started a YouTube channel and the reason I called it Kenton and Habiba was because I didn't really want my patients to know who I was or I didn't want my patients to be able to find me. So I used our first names and I intentionally used Kenton's first name first because I knew at the time most people referred to me as Dr. Tunau um, and I did not want my patients looking for Dr. Tunau on YouTube. So I really didn't tell anybody. I made videos about family, cooking, whatever we did on the weekend, but I really didn't let anyone know that I was doing this. 
um, until I was about to leave that particular town. Then I kind of shared with a few people, very few. And I remember when I, uh, when my mom and family found out, they weren't exactly, you know, that happy about it. It was kind of like, why would you do that? Why would you want to expose and put your life out there? But it just felt like something I enjoyed. So I continued to do it. We moved, new jobs. I decided it was a great way to document what I was going through, what my family was going through. Um, and so I continued to post comment. I enjoyed sharing my life. I enjoyed sharing some cooking ideas on, you know, on YouTube. I enjoyed the community, the sense of community I was getting with different you know other creatives and so I just kept doing it and it felt natural like it felt it got to the point where I could not imagine not uploading a video or not making video content um, so the point is that I did this not because I wanted to make money this was for me YouTube was not never about making money in fact I had no clue I honestly had zero clue about how people make money on YouTube it was just a creative process for me so that should give you a little bit about how I kind of started now since then um, because I think I kind of I made the channel a couple of years ago but then I got really serious about it about a year ago where I started uploading content consistently since then obviously I have learned how people make money on YouTube and how basically they grow their brand or how they develop their businesses using YouTube as a tool so we're gonna kind of segue a little bit where I would like at this moment to be a little bit of a teacher for you to be a little bit more of I don't know someone who may know a little bit about YouTube at this point and for those of you that are again small business owners or entrepreneurs or content creators um, or thinking about starting YouTube or all those that have messaged me that I cannot answer directly to because that would be too many people to ask answer questions about starting a channel and how to grow a channel and what software to use that's there's so much information um, so let's see I brought my notes I brought my notes because I have some things that I would like you to think about all right so the first thing I have here is what is your why why would you like to start a YouTube channel why, what is the point is it because you're trying to build a brand you have a business that you want to start um, is it because you are looking for that sense of community is it because you need a creative outlet like I did is it because you have a subject that you want to teach is it because you have a subject that you want to use to entertain um, as you will as you have seen if you've been watching us for a while uh, I use these videos not only to teach honestly but I use them to entertain and I use them also as a, a way to give people an outlet away from all the stress I mean there's so much stress going on in the world I don't even need to go into it I would like when people come to our channel that it, it, it feels like an escape it feels like somewhere you know outside of your reality and so that's why you know I feel motivated to continue to do it um, of course there's nothing wrong with doing YouTube if you're doing it because you want to make money there's certainly money to be made in making in making YouTube videos uh, and we'll get into that um, or maybe you're doing it because it's a hobby but you have to really focus in on what is your why because if you don't know why you're doing it you're gonna be all over the place and you're going to be very disappointed because the results you're looking for may not necessarily pan out that way hi everyone lady M says all right so other reasons I have that people may start a YouTube video it might be a hobby it might be to sell a product it might be because you want to work with brands maybe you feel like you're a good model or maybe you have a product that you want to promote and you want to work with brands uh, maybe you're doing it because you want to build your portfolio so for example maybe you're an architect or maybe you're an artist or maybe again you're a model or maybe you do hair if you can show your work on YouTube then you're showing potential clients what you're able to do so you know most people have Facebook and Facebook is great and Facebook works 
uh, Instagram works too, but they all have their limitations. And so YouTube can be a great resource when you have those other uh, social media outlets and you can link all of them and then your exposure is even more or even greater. Um, you might be doing this because you want to raise awareness. You have some sort of, you know, either political stand or some stand about the environment or some, you know, cause that you're trying to champion and that you need a platform to raise that awareness. YouTube is a great place because, you know, it's one thing to write about your subject of concern, but it's also another when people can see you. It feels like they can literally feel you or reach out and touch you. Um, or maybe another good reason is you're trying to leave a legacy. So for example, when I started YouTube uh, or YouTube channel, I didn't start YouTube, but when I started this YouTube channel, uh, another reason I did was because where we were living at the time, we were gonna move, I was gonna close the practice, um, we were gonna move house. There was a lot of things going on that felt really emotional to me and I felt like this would be a great way to capture it for my children to see in the future, but also for relatives who were abroad, this was a way for them to keep up with us. Okay, so again, like I mentioned before, I need you to make sure that when you are doing or planning to start a channel, that you have a sense of focus and direction. And what I mean by that is I've seen a lot of channels on YouTube or smaller channels where people are all over the place. And I don't mean just that you have different interests because I have a lot of interest. I have a lot of interest. As you can see, a lot of cooking, uh, whatever, uh, home design, uh, medicine, different interests. But my point is that make sure you are consistent with who you are putting out. I've seen people who you know that realistically that is not their personality. They're trying to be somebody else. It gets old, it gets tiring. Try to be yourself, try to be authentic, try to be consistent with whoever it is that you are and whoever it is that you're trying to present. Because honestly, when you are trying to be somebody else, it gets tiring and then people can also see through it. They can see when you're pretending to be that other influencer. They can see if you're pretending to be that other YouTuber. It's very transparent. So I think the best recipe, in my opinion, uh, to success on YouTube is just to feel confident enough to feel that you can be yourself. Don't try to be fancier than anybody you are, than who you are. Don't try to look richer than who you are. Don't try, you know, to just not be the person that you really are. Um, so that's something I would definitely tell, especially the younger uh, influencers out there. All right, so other serious questions you need to ask yourself before you start YouTube is, do you have the time? Okay, because I know that when people watch these YouTube videos, they think, oh my God, she's living such a great life. It looks like she's had so much fun. They, you know, they just go out, they eat, they dress up, they, they buy stuff, they show off. No, that's just on the surface. On the surface, my goal is to entertain you on the surface. But underneath it all, it requires a ton of work. Um, what video or editing a video in itself, to me personally, that's not where the work is. The work comes when you have to spend time to edit that video, when you have to decide, how do I take an hour or 60 minutes worth of footage and condense it into 20 minutes or condense it into 10 minutes of what I think is meaningful material? How do I layer the music? How do I add on the text? How do I remove any footage that I think is useless or not helpful to my message? That takes time. And so, for example, one video may take you, literally one 10 or 15 minute video can take you up to four to six hours. I'm very serious, I'm not exaggerating. It can take that long. So my question before you start, or if you are going to continue, is do you have the time? Because if you don't have the time, then you're not really gonna succeed. Also, are you willing to put in, be consistent? You have to be very consistent. People will watch you for a while and then you start and you have all this energy and you have all this, you know, I'm gonna do it and then you don't stick to it. So you need to be consistent. And consistency, I think on YouTube means that you have to put at least one video a week. Ideally, maybe two. 
but at least one video a week. Uh, one video every two weeks, I don't think that's that great. Um, or I don't think you're gonna grow as fast as you wanna grow. One video once a month, mm -mm. Maybe if you are lucky and you're one of those people like, you know, there was this pretty young uh, uh, Instagrammer who put up a video showing living her life in a minivan or living her life on the road with a snake, like something super random. And that blew up. That channel blew up like she got like a million subscribers in a really short time. But the reality for most of us is that it takes time and work and consistency um, someone said, is editing hard? No, editing is not hard. It is just tedious. Tedious mean that it is frustrating. It can be challenging if your editing software is not great. Um, it can be challenging if the internet is not working properly. It can be challenging if you don't have the time or the space. So that's what makes it challenging. But to say editing is difficult, no, I think anyone with the time and patience can learn. Now, people have asked me what editing program should you use? I think it's different. It's different for every person. It's different based on your budget, what you're willing to buy, uh, because most editing programs are not free. YouTube used to have a free editing program, and so when I first started out making videos, the editing program was actually free, and then they got rid of it. So now I use a program called Filmora, Filmora, uh, and uh, that one's fine and also it depends on what's compatible with your computer or laptop so obviously you're gonna need to have a laptop or a computer whether it be an Apple or Windows computer uh, ideally now I do know that there are a lot of people who put YouTube videos on and they don't have a laptop that they use they are just using their cell phone like right now I'm recording on my cell phone which is why the quality is not as good as when I use my vlog camera so I think the cell phone is great if you're doing short clips or if you're doing a live video like this it's fine uh, but if you want to do this long term I definitely think you're gonna need a vlogging camera um, I happen to use, and this is going off subject a little bit, I happen to use the G7X Canon. I think it runs for maybe four to $500, something like that, and they've updated it, but um, that's just a thought. So anyway, do you quit easily? Do you, are you willing to uh, deal with delayed gratification? Um, and so those are things I really think you need to think about. So I've already told you about or focusing on be yourself, be, be vulnerable, be authentic. I didn't actually say anything about being vulnerable. I did say that you need to be authentic. Authentic mean be your honest self because people will see through it when you're being fake. Uh, but be willing to be vulnerable. And why this is important is that, for example, when I started the channel, um, to be honest, I was so concerned with what my patients would think. I was so concerned with what my family would think that I really felt like I held back a lot of who I was because A, I didn't want really anyone to see. It's like, how do you make a channel and you don't want to share it? And B, I was just so afraid of judgment. And so I think one of the most important things I have to say to you is if you are on social media, you cannot care. You cannot care too much about what people think. People are going to judge you. People are going to be critical of you regardless of what you do. If you are putting out positive content and you know that you can sleep well at night, that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. You have one life. This is your life to do with as you please. And again, as long as you're keeping it positive, I really think that you need to stop worrying about what people think or what they're going to say about you doing this. Um, so that's just my thought. But I feel like it was very freeing for me as soon as I stopped thinking about what people were gonna say, what people were gonna think, uh, what my employers were gonna say or think. In fact, I've had um, times where, because the way YouTube is now exploded, um, I've had employers actually bring up the fact that I'm on YouTube and at first I kind of you know was taken aback by it like oh my god that's just my private life I don't want to talk about YouTube with my employer but it came up and so I go yeah it's something that I do you know I use it to teach I use it to entertain and I do it because I enjoy doing it 
Now let's move on and talk about something more, you know, what pertaining to what brought us here. So anyway, I think you have to be willing to be vulnerable. Um, you can't be too closed off because people don't want to see robots. They want to see a real person. Uh, they don't, they don't want to see perfection. They want to see people who are again, vulnerable, who have flaws like them. I am not perfect. I have challenges. I have issues with my, my weight. I know that I'm a physician who should be teaching you to eat healthy. And yet sometimes here I am eating uh, fattening food or junk food. You know, I try not to do that too often, but my point is that I am human and I'm not going to hide the fact that I do eat food that ne doesn't necessarily fit what you would consider healthy. Sometimes I don't feel like wearing makeup. Sometimes I don't feel like doing my hair, but I feel comfortable enough to go on YouTube and share that part of me with you. So I think, again, focus on being vulnerable sometimes, not all the time, because it depends on what type of channel you're trying to make. So for example, if you're a physician and you're trying to put a channel that teaches people or it's a professional type video, then certainly your approach is going to be different because you might not be sharing your private life with them, you know, and that's okay too, because if you're there to teach, I don't know, knitting, or you're there to teach cooking, or you're there to teach mechanics, there is someone for everyone. So that's another point I want to, uh, to make that despite the fact that YouTube is completely saturated, <laughs> sorry fly despite the fact that YouTube is completely saturated if you want to start a channel you start a channel because there's nobody else like you there is nobody else like you or who can present that information like you can um, just make sure again that you're doing it for the right reasons and you're willing to be honest and open with whatever it is that you're teaching okay so let's see uh, I talked about being putting yourself out there. Another one is maximize your visibility. In order to be successful, I think on YouTube, it's not just about having a channel, an isolated YouTube channel. Hopefully you have Instagram, hopefully you have Facebook, hopefully you might have a blog. Well, you need to make sure that you are linking your YouTube channel to all of those other media sources or all of those other platforms that you have because what you'll find is that your views will double because now your Instagram followers who may not have known that you are on YouTube are now going to follow you or people on Facebook who didn't know you were doing YouTube are now going to have, you know, a different side of you to follow. So make sure that it's not just about YouTube, that you have these other social media platforms and that you link them. All right. What else? What else? What else? What else? Okay. So here's another thing for you. As you know, YouTube is the second biggest, largest, second biggest search engine out there. Meaning that when people are looking for information, usually most people go to Google, right? You Google something. Somebody asks you a question, let me Google it. Well, YouTube is the second largest, biggest search en engine. Why does that sound so difficult to say? But anyway, my point is that most people go on YouTube because they're looking for information. They're looking for something uh, to help a problem that they have. You know, they're looking for solutions. So in starting a channel, I think it's important that your approach be, uh, in a sense, a solution or serving to help someone fix a problem. So for example, when you title your videos, it might be how to X, Y, Z, or how to build this, or how to grow this, or this is the best X, Y, Z. You see what I'm saying? So that make it uh, a point to, do, to put out, a, to serve as a resource for someone so that you are searchable. So I know that it seems somewhat contradictory because I actually, or Kenton and I have a vlog channel and usually a vlog channel means that we are sharing our life. We're not, it doesn't appear that we are um, teaching something, you know, meaningful, but we try to embed it in there. So you have to make sure that if you're going to start a YouTube channel, nowadays it's a lot harder to start a YouTube channel when nobody knows who you are. 
uh, it's hard to start a YouTube channel just by being a vlog channel, just by showing your life. It's easier to grow or faster to grow if you're teaching something, or if you're serving as a resource, or if someone can look up a subject and find you. So for example, how to make the best Jamaican rum cake. That's one of my biggest uh, uh, videos out there, or one of my most searched videos out there is how to make Jamaican rum cake because again, I was teaching something uh, or showing them how to make something. So that's one thing I will say to you that learn how to use hashtags, learn how to be searchable. You know, I've seen people post on YouTube or post on Instagram and there's no hashtag, like hashtag uh, tree or hashtag uh, family vlog or hashtag uh, clothes or hashtag uh, whatever you, you see what I'm saying you need to learn to use the hashtags which serve as a way for people to find that subject that you are discussing or that uh, product that you are showing all right so all right here we go um, another subject I want to say which I thought I alluded to is that remember YouTube is work it really is work uh, when I first started, I just thought, oh, it was just fun, it was just cute, it was just, yeah, fun. But it's work, it really is. You have to put in the time. If you wanna see growth, just like growth anywhere in your life, you're gonna need to put in the time. You know what, these bugs are bugging me. <laughs> these bugs are bugging me, so let's go inside. Let's go inside. <laughs> Hopefully my place isn't too messy. Ooh, you can see I look sweaty, sort of. Maybe not too bad. Yeah, can you hear me? Well, hopefully, and the light is okay. Oh, you see my umbrella light right there? All right, so in addition to being work, uh, YouTube requires money. Uh, and when I say that, I don't mean that you have to have a lot of money to uh, start a channel. No, that's not what I mean. Let me put this over here. Hopefully, you're gonna be able to see me sitting down on that chair right there. So yeah, I'm gonna sit right there. All right. Can you see me? Is that good? I hope that's good. Can you hear me? <laughs> I feel so far away. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna say that um, YouTube requires money. So even, you know, when you first start out, you may not have, a, I feel like I'm too far. Even when you first start out, you may not have a lot of money and that's fine, that's fine, but in order to grow your channel, you're gonna to need to invest in lights. You're gonna to need to invest in a good camera. You're gonna to need to invest in tripods. You're gonna to need to invest maybe in a back, a, a, a back screen. You're gonna to need to invest in, let me see what else, um, a mic. Um, so there are certain tools that you're going to need to invest in and you don't have to get them immediately. So even though I'm saying you're gonna need some money, I don't think you're gonna need all of that money to start off with. So if you just have your cell phone, start there. Start with what you have. But over time, just understand that as you're trying to develop and grow your channel, you're going to need to invest in some equipment. Um, there's certainly a lot of things that I still need and I don't have, um, like a proper editing or a better editing software program. All of those things obviously cost money and I just give myself the goal that I don't want to purchase those things until I meet certain, you know, goals or certain marks in my YouTube channel career. So yeah, keep that in mind. And then another thing I would like to emphasize is quality over quantity. So, you know, there are a lot of young people on YouTube and, you know, maybe in fact, most people might say YouTube is a young people's platform. I don't know. Um, I kind of disagree. Obviously, I'm a grown ass woman <laughs> over 40 years old um, who has, uh, you know, an education uh, completely different than doing YouTube. But yet here I am. Right. So um, quality over quantity. Um, again, part of being authentic or part of being yourself, make sure that you're not trying to be somebody else and you're not just trying to spit out videos just to spit out videos because you want to be seen. I think people, intelligent people appreciate when you're putting in the time and that you, you took the time to think about what you were going to say. You took the time to make it meaningful. You took the time to show them that 
you respect their not just respect their opinion but you respect their time and so it's more important in my opinion to put out quality videos or quality product than it is to just put out quantity i know you want to grow i know you want to you know blow up like everyone you want to be discovered and you are aware that the more content you put out the more likely it is to be seen but i always believe in quantity is not that important it's quality quality over quantity okay um and then on that note when we talk about quality so yes i'm saying start where you are and put out videos if all you have is your um your cell phone and you don't have a proper vlogging camera but over time just do your best to make sure that you put a little bit of effort into it so what you will notice is some of the best videos on youtube sometimes it's not always the content sometimes it is the title um what you title your video um and also the thumbnail Thumbnail. so what's the first thing people see now today my thumbnail doesn't count that was crap I happened to be holding the camera and I didn't want it to look at me so it tilted down and looked at Mariam's desk so I'm gonna go back actually and put in a more professional looking thumbnail um, on on the channel or on this video but I think it's important that if you want to be seen you want to grab people's attention so uh, YouTube, when you make a video and you upload it, YouTube will select a frame for you and they will create a, a thumbnail for you, which will go on your video. But, you know, if you want it to look professional and you want it to grab people's attention, you're going to need to create a thumbnail yourself. And you can do that with different programs they have online. You can look it up how to create a thumbnail. I personally use uh, PicMonkey. PicMonkey is easy. Um, it's easy, it's fun, and that's what I use to make these thumbnails. Um, you do have to pay a fee, but like everything else, everybody, you know, there's a cost for everything, right? I don't believe it is, it's, it's, it's expensive at all, but that's what I have decided to invest in, PicMonkey. So I think your thumbnail is imp important, very important when you are making YouTube videos. Your title is very important. Get to the point make it catchy get to the point but don't lie you know they have what they call clickbait i was never into that don't don't do don't put out clickbait because people people get mad when they click on a video that you describe and it's not what the content is about so clickbait means that you've exaggerated or you've lied and you've you've made a title just to grab people's attention but yet the video has nothing to do with what you have titled your video about so be careful you will get views initially but it will count against you when people click out of that video when they are disappointed all right what's another point i would like you to know if you are new on youtube or thinking about starting a youtube video understand yeah the difference between subscribers and views okay um and let's move you a little closer here let's see just in case yeah understand the difference between subscribers and views so for most people when you start you're thinking oh my god i want to hurry up and get to a thousand subscribers i want to get to a lot of subscribers i want to get to five thousand whatever the number is in your head that you want um uh, because then i can make a lot of money um or uh whatever so the difference that you need to understand is you need about a thousand subscribers to be monetized on youtube a thousand subscribers to be monetized so what that means is that you need a, th a thousand people who have subscribed and then you can start making money on youtube okay but beyond that after you've made that 1000 subscribers really the number of subscribers you have doesn't necessarily determine how much money you make so for example you can have 20,000 subscribers and let's say I had 50,000 subscribers because that's the new goal, right? Let's say I have 50,000 subscribers and this other person has 20,000 subscribers. They can make more money than I am, okay? Because YouTube, when it comes to AdSense, they don't pay you based on your number of subscribers. They pay you based on your watch time hours, okay? Based on your views. So in essence, you're making money based on how many views you have, not how many subscribers you have. 
So sometimes you can see a smaller channel, maybe again, they have 20,000 subscribers, but they could be making a ton more money than the person who has 50,000 subscribers. Um, in general though, in general, the more subscribers you have, in general, the likelihood is that you're going to make more money on YouTube, okay? But it's not, it's not an exact thing. There are so many things that go into it. Um, so for example, you can find celebrities that have YouTube channels, but they have very little engagement. And what does that term mean, engagement? Meaning that everybody already knows who they are as celebrities, so of course they get a lot of views, but they're not engaging, they're not talking to their subscribers. You know, their subscribers may leave comments, but they're not engaging back and forth with them. YouTube rewards you for engagement. So the more engagement you have with your subscribers, which is why I encourage you to leave me thumbs up, which is why I encourage you to leave your comments, because the more you do that, the higher my engagement is, the more likely YouTube is going to recommend the video to somebody else. So by the way, say hello. Where are you watching me from before I forget? <laughs> so yeah, those are terms that I think you really need to understand when you are starting a YouTube channel. The difference between the number of subscribers and your views or yeah, because having more views helps you make more money, not necessarily having more subscribers. Now, another, but however, again, it's complicated sometimes because when you're dealing with brands, when you're dealing with brands, uh, brands that, you know, uh, sponsor you and they pay, a lot of times these brands look at how many subscribers you have, which sometimes just doesn't seem fair, but that's what they do. They may have an idea in their head that you have to have 25,000 uh, before they are willing to do business with you. Or sometimes, um, you know, certain uh, companies like Famebit has a number where you have to have X amount of uh, subscribers before they'll work with you. So there are a lot of companies out there that are willing to work with YouTubers because A, it's cheaper than working with a celebrity. Um, but the point is they will, depending on how many subscribers you have. So again, my point is that it is both. Really, that's what I wanna say, it's both. It's both your subscribers and it's also your watch time, how many views you have, okay? All right, so uh, before I move on, I would like also to focus in on your analytics. So when I started YouTube, I had no idea about analytics. What is that? You know, all I know is I put a video, somebody watched. Well, on YouTube's, uh, YouTube Studio, which should be either on your left-hand side of your channel, or maybe you're right, I don't know. I think it's your left-hand side. If you scroll down, you'll see analytics on there. And that is a way for you to figure out how you're doing on YouTube and how you can get better. I really find the information very, very helpful. Um, it basically shows you how each video you're doing or have made is ranking compared to other videos you have made. So I find it fascinating to go on there and see um, where my subscribers are watching me from. Like you can literally go on and figure out your demographics. Basically, uh, what countries are watching you more than others. So for example, on Kenton and Habiba, uh, most of our viewers or subscribers are watching from the United States. Some watch from United Kingdom. Um, and what's up if you're watching me from another country? Some people are watching from Canada. So so the uh, four countries I get the most views from are United States, which is good, uh, Canada, um, Nigeria, um, and also I do get a lot of Caribbean subscribers or followers. So why I think it's a great thing to uh, have majority of my subscribers in the United States, even though I appreciate everybody else, um, YouTube actually pays you more for subscribers that are in the United States, believe it or not. Uh, so not every country, not, not, you're based on your views, uh, depending on what countries follow you, uh, how much you get paid also varies. So that's important to know. Um, but yeah, understand your audience, understand your engagement, understand all of those numbers. It's really important if you're trying to grow here on YouTube. 
All right, what else? What else do we want to talk about? So yeah, people who ask, oh, can you make money on YouTube considering I started without any clue and I did not do this to make money? Um, there are different, different, different ways you can make money on YouTube. Um, number one is you can rely on YouTube alone. But let me tell you, most people that are on YouTube are not making money or relying on the money that they make from YouTube alone. You make, once you have a thousand subscribers, okay, once you have a thousand subscribers, you can apply to join AdSense. And the option will pop up on your channel to join AdSense if you want. So you can make money on, uh, again, by AdSense. AdSense uh, works through Google. So you get a check through Google. Um, initially, it's literally like cents. And I mean it. It's literally like a dime, uh, 20 cents, 40 cents, something like that. Now, once you are making about $100, then $100 or above, you have $100 or above in your account, then they start sending you a check. So, you know, initially, I remember when I was like, ooh, I made 20 cents, ooh, amazing. Ooh, my God, I made my first $100, great. Um, and um, I don't know if it's saying too much, but I'm going to share with you, like one of my most viewed, uh, viewed videos, the one where my father came to, you know, came to America, that video alone uh, made about $3,000. Mm -hmm. So for me at the time, I was like, oh my God, $3,000? Wow, can you imagine what these huge, bigger channels are making? Yep. So yes, you can make money through AdSense. Um, however, again, back to the fact that most people on YouTube are not relying on AdSense, you can make money um, as an affiliate. So there are programs out there like FameBit, and you can look up FameBit, Google it, um, where they work with YouTube and depending on your subscriber count or your views, they will send you information about different brands and how to partner with different brands and help promote a brand's product and in turn sell you uh, and in turn pay you for that uh, promotion. So if you'll notice, I actually really don't do brands uh, promotions on my channel and people, brands do reach out to say, hey, would you like to promote this for me or would you like to promote that for us? Um, if I don't believe in the product, I'm not going to put it on my channel. So anything that you see a product on our channel, it's because I genuinely use it and I genuinely enjoy it or I genuinely believe in the product. And in fact, in a few days, I'm going to upload a video that I did with a brunch uh, of a brunch, a delicious, amazing brunch, pretty brunch. And in it, I show a product. You'll see the product uh, that I was sent. And I, you know, I told them, I'm gonna be honest, and if this product does not work, I'm not gonna talk about it. So I will either send it back, or um, I will, you know, tell you at what it is. So um, I think, you know, be honest, be authentic, and uh, recognize, going back to the subject, that yes, there are brands out there, usually they will contact you. When I started, I used to try to reach out to brands, but, it was a struggle. They don't respond. If you've ever tried and you're a small channel, they don't respond or they give you an excuse. Uh, we are not working with, you know, uh, content creators at this time or something lame like that. They don't respond. So what I realized is, you know what, fall back, spend the time and energy growing the channel and they will come to me. And that's really what happened. Um, over time, I start getting more and more, you know, emails and, uh, you know, text messages or DMs to, hey, would you like to feature our product? Or, hey, would you like to, uh, you know, show our product in one of your videos? So how that, that's, that's how that works. So AdSense, brand deals, affiliate links. Affiliate links, um, you have seen here on this channel. Uh, we work with Amazon. I know there are a lot of people who don't like Amazon or don't like um, what they stand for. I don't know. But I know that there are a lot of good products on Amazon. And especially nowadays where we are going through quarantine, this pandemic, a lot of us are doing a lot more shopping online. And so you can do a lot of your shopping with Amazon. Um, so I always 
will often leave links in the description box for you to, to find because they're usually items that I actually have in the house or items that we've actually purchased. Kenton does a lot of shopping on Amazon. And so, yeah, whenever we buy something that I think um, our friends or family or subscribers, YouTube family would like to see, I will leave a link in the subs uh, description box. So understand that we get a small commission every time you use the link uh, and purchase something. So that's how that works. So it's like you get a little bit of money with affiliate links, you get a little bit of money with AdSense, you get a little bit of money uh, with um, you know sponsorships and it all adds up. So that's how people make money on YouTube. It's not coming necessarily from one stream. Now, another way to make money on YouTube is to sell a product um, or sell merch. You've seen these huge channels where over time they become so popular that people want t-shirts from them or people want mugs from them or people want whatever from them so they sell merch and youtube will actually help you uh link your product so if i wanted to or if kenton and i wanted to we really at this moment in time could sell t-shirts with kenton and habibo or with our logo or without whatever we want to sell um and link it below but i just personally <laughs> didn't think we were there yet, um, didn't necessarily want it to be bothered with that, but in the future, what appeals to me is the kind of merch I would like to sell is like a book. You know, I think that to me, that is valuable. That is something you can hold on to. I would like, you know, eventually to have a book or books that I link below and, you know, sell as merch uh, for my subscribers. So I think that's how people in general make money on YouTube and um, different ways that they make money. Um, and, and so anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted you to know. Oh, another thing I want you to know is that uh, look up Social Blue Book for small channels that are wondering, okay, when I reach out to a brand or brand reaches out to me, how do I know how much to charge? You know, how do I know what my worth is? Because, you know, I'm sure many of you will realize that after doing YouTube or, you know, making content, it is work, right? And we're getting tired of being sent product, you know, and making content for free, meaning that a lot of brands out there, some of the smaller ones, well, even the big ones, honestly, have the nerve to send you product um, with the expectation that you're supposed to make content and that's it. So you did all this work making content, spending hours, and they just want to send you product without payment. Um, me personally, unless that product is something I really, really want and really, really gonna need, I, I don't want just products. I can buy products myself. I can buy free, I can buy makeup. I can buy, you know, little, little things. I don't need my house cluttered with product. So if you want to work with me as a brand, I would like to get paid for my work. And I think that's fair because again, it is work. Um, and I think it's important to know your worth. So back to how do you know what to charge? I need you to look up the social blue book. I think that's what it's pretty much called. Yeah, exactly. Social blue book. If you look that up, it will ask you basically about how many um, subscribers you have on YouTube. It will ask you about how many you know channels or other social platforms you have and it plugs you plug in all that information and it will tell you each time well this is what you should charge and you should use that as a guideline it's not exact science you can change it or ask for more if you think you you deserve more or ask for less it's up to you um and i know certainly if you're a professional um for example you happen to have gone to medical school or you happen to be a lawyer or you happen to be some other type of professional you should believe that your worth is more because you uh, people are looking at you as someone who uh, is trustworthy or is someone that is hopefully honest and so if you believe your worth is much more than that that's what you should charge so anyway that's pretty much what I wanted to say about this whole YouTube thing. It is like a job. It is not for me anymore a hobby. It is work, okay? And so uh, 
I definitely think that it's it's important to to have some respect for all those content creators out there uh, because it's it's not easy. And I think that if you want to do this, by all means, you should do this. It's again, it's your life. Um, don't let anybody tell you what to do or what not to do as long as you are grown. And again, as long as you are putting out material that is honest, that is open, but is respectable. You know, um, I this is not a prank channel. Nothing wrong with prank channels out there. You know, the ones where they prank the, the boyfriend or they prank the girlfriend or they do these funny gags on each other. Uh, I love those channels, but that's not our channel. That's not me. You know, and so when you start off doing a channel like a prank channel, I don't know, I feel like it would be exhausting to constantly think of what what next? What's the biggest prank? You know, what what how can I outdo myself? I don't want to do all that. I need to be authentic to who I am. Um, and I suggest that if you're starting a YouTube channel, you figure out what is authentic for you. You figure out what it is that you want to do with your channel. Um, that you can continue to do and not get bored doing because otherwise it will get old real quick when you realize that oh six months I didn't make any money one year I am still struggling to get 1,000 subscribers what is this <laughs> what is this wahala <laughs> if you're lucky maybe you'll blow up in six months but I know for us it took us I believe it took us about a year a year or more to get 1,000 subscribers, you know? And I never bought, that's another thing, I never bought subscribers. I don't know if they still do that, but people used to do that where it would say, if you click here, you can buy subscribers. Or if you, if you click on this link, you know, I'll subscribe to you and you subscribe to me. No, I, I never did any of that, never did any of that because we want people that watch our channel to genuinely uh, watch us because they really enjoy watching us. They know what we're about. They've gotten to know us. And I didn't use some sort of, you know, gag or, or scam to get them. Um, we really appreciate our subscribers and I really enjoy having all of you. I enjoy the community that we have here. Um, and I think another lesson to new uh, YouTubers is that communicate. Um, when people leave you comments, write back, spend the time. If they spent the time to type you a note, spend the time to write back. It really is amazing the kind of friendships and the kind of, um, you know, commitment you will gain when people realize you're a real person and that you will write back and that you took the time to read their comments. So I really just want to make sure you know that every one of you, I really, really do appreciate you. And our success on this channel is dependent on, you know, you watching us. And, and that's something I don't, you know, take for granted at all. And I think it's, it's important that we constantly, uh, that I, that I'm reminding you of that point, um, that I appreciate every one of you. And so does Kenton. Kenton is uh, doing, he's working by the way, he really is. As you guys know, he is a law student and a full-time, uh, you know, employee. He has a full-time job. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a lot. So he comes on here when he can, um, but um, it can be a challenge. So I hope, anyway, I hope all of this was helpful. Um, and I hope you will continue to watch us. And if you like this type of video, definitely thumbs up, let me know. I'm thinking of doing another video. Should we go back outside? Let's go back outside. I was thinking of doing another video where I show you um, my office, basically show you where I do my YouTube videos or where I edit videos. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's a nice space. I also would like to uh, show you some of the gadgets or the tools that I use so far because I have acquired quite a few, you know, little tr tricks and little gags and things that I use. Um, so yeah, maybe in the near future I can share that with you. But definitely thumbs up and if you think this video would be helpful to another entrepreneur or another YouTuber or aspiring YouTuber, um, definitely share this with somebody. Okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Linda Goodwill. She says, I love your videos. Thank you. Really appreciate it. 
bye okay so here we go how to turn this off bye <laughs> again make sure you thumbs up share like <laughs>